Hello everybody, it's me, Big Daddy Brian, and my best friend in 7th grade, Sebastian, is not here, and my baby mama with all the drama is also not here. It's just me doing this episode solo, dolo, and there's a good reason for that. I'm the only one from all three of us that has caught up to One Piece. I mean, my best friend Sebastian is up to episode 5, he can barely get through that, and my baby mama is in Wano right now, so it's just me and Egghead Island. So let's talk about chapter 1106. I usually don't make chapter video reviews, but this chapter was so hyped that I had to do it. So we start off the chapter with Luffy eating food and eating enough of it to get into gear 5. But this chapter still doesn't tell us how Luffy ended up there. I know some people guess that the ancient robot came in clutch and took Luffy there, but later in the chapter we see that he's in the same spot that they showed earlier in the arc. So I don't really see how he even got to where Luffy is at. I did predict that Leo was the one that got Luffy and took him to the food vending machine because he's so small and fast. And plus, I feel like nobody would really notice him coming in and taking Luffy all the way over there. But I only predicted that because I thought the boat at the end of the last chapter, 1105, was the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. But as we see later, it really wasn't them, so my prediction was a failure. People were also predicting that Caribou was the one that came in and gave Luffy food with his devil fruit powers. But I don't think that's possible because Caribou is a coward. You really think Caribou is going to give Luffy food when there's a battle going on with one of the five elders and one of the admirals? Maybe it's just an obvious answer like Atlas. Or maybe Seraphim Boa loves Luffy so much that she gave him food. Siren is ready to let the pacifista shoot lasers at Kuma and Bonnie. But Vegapunk says hold up. And Vegapunk tells Atlas to tell Bonnie that she has the highest authority for the pacifistas. I don't know how Vegapunk was able to do it, but it looked cool seeing the marines getting shot up by all the pacifistas with their lasers. But due to our boy's betrayal, Siren just comes in and stabs him. And Loki, I have a little bit of a problem with this because Sanji in the last chapter said, Bonnie, don't worry, I won't let anything happen to him. But as we see later on, Sanji isn't even close to where Vegapunk is. And I just feel like Oda is setting up our boy Sanji for failure. Like, it just feels like Sanji is taking L after L in this arc, or is it just me? Kuzaru is ready to cut up Bonnie and Kuma, but Luffy in Gear 5 comes in and punches Kuzaru in the face. And we get to see an awesome double page spread of Bonnie seeing Luffy in Gear 5 for the first time. Now that Bonnie has seen Luffy in Gear 5, I feel like Oda is setting up Bonnie to throw an effective punch at Saturn. And I mean, he deserves it for everything that he's put this family through. I don't know if she's strong enough to beat Saturn, but who knows, we did find out that her powers might get more powerful if she sees Luffy in Gear 5. So maybe she is able to beat Saturn or Kuzaru. While Luffy is in Gear 5, we see that the ancient robot moves again, and I really wonder what this robot is going to do in this arc. I mean, it's like a mystery box, like we just don't know what this robot is capable of doing. Like, is it gonna get up and then it just gets all rusty and collapses? Now let's talk about the giant elephant in the room. You saw what I did there? Let's talk about Zo. Just kidding, so the mysterious ship we saw in the last chapter belongs to the giant pirates. I would have never guessed that it would be Broggy and Dory coming in clutch to save the Straw Hats. When I saw the spoilers for this week, I was legit shook that they were the ones coming in clutch to save the crew. I was like, I know they were gonna meet again, but not like this. It's cool to see Broggy and Dory coming back to the story because it's such an awesome way to explain how the crew gets to Elbaf. I mean, Oda dropped a bomb earlier this year talking about how the crew might be going to that one island that we've been waiting for. And a lot of people predicted that the island he was talking about was Elbaf, and it seems like we might be right, guys. It's cool seeing that Oda can get characters from 20 years ago and make them relevant to the current story. Last week, I made a video talking about how Little Garden is important to the story. Without the crew meeting Broggy and Dory, who knows if they're going to be able to survive Annie's lobby or even rescue Robin. And here the giants are again saving the crew from the world government. I still can't believe how Oda played us in the last chapter. There were only two options that most people really considered. There were the Blackbeard Pirates that we saw their flag way back in chapter 1079. And the other option people consider were the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Because way back when they formed, the narrator said that they would cause a great incident of historical proportions. And since Egghead is also going to have an incident occur, why wouldn't the two be the same? But again, guys, we were wrong. I really wonder where the story's going to go with Dory and Broggy in the story. The last time we saw them, they were wrecking Kid's crew and hanging out with Shanks. Once they're done achieving their goal on Egghead Island, are they going to take Luffy to Elbaf and let him meet Shanks? I don't think that's a possibility since Shanks up to this point has shown no interest in meeting Luffy until he gets to One Piece. So there are only two options that I'm really considering that might happen in the story. 
Either Elbaf has a red pawn and glyph that the crew might need, or the Giants might know something about the Void Sentry that might be something of interest to the crew, especially since the Giants are able to live longer than most humans. What I'm hoping for is that we learn some more information on the Void Sentry just because it's always interesting. What I also like about this chapter is that Broggy and Dora were talking about how it's really hectic up in Egghead Island just like the news reported. And I like that because it's basically saying that everything that's going on right now in this arc is being reported across the world. I like the reason that Vegapunk gave Bonnie the highest authority for the pacifistas was because he didn't want her to get shot down by her own father's clones. But I do wonder, has Bonnie ran into any pacifistas before Egghead Island? I mean, we saw some in Sabaody, but we never really saw Bonnie interacting with them during that arc. I know the first time she saw them was way back in Marine 4 when they were showing the war on the screen in Sabaody. But I wonder if she saw one in person and was just like, hey, don't shoot at me, you're my father. And it would be funny if in that moment, that's how she realized she has the highest authority for these pacifistas. I know Vegapunk got stabbed in this chapter, but obviously I don't really think he's going to die. Maybe he'll have some machine where it just like automatically heals him really quick. But other than that, I say his chance of survival is like 99%. There's just that 1% because you just never know. Another thing I liked about this chapter is when Broggy and Dory showed up in their giant ship, they just look bigger than all the Navy ships. And they just make the Buster Call look so weak. Like they could line up these ships in one row and just one shot them. I've seen some people complain about Broggy and Dory coming back because Mr. 3 made them look weak. And I have to disagree, Mr. 3 used some trickery on them and plus both of them have been fighting for over a hundred years. So put some respect on their name. And I saw that some people were calling them both weak for having a 100 million berry bounty. But come on guys, that was a bounty from a hundred years ago. I don't think their bounty from a hundred years ago would be the same now. But overall, I thought this chapter was a 10 out of 10. It was so good, it made me drop a One Piece chapter video review. I'll probably only make these type of videos for One Piece chapters that get me really hyped up. But maybe I could do them on a regular basis if you guys really like this video. So if you want me to keep making videos like this, leave a comment down below, like the video, and please subscribe to the channel. Shout out to you guys. Bye. Whoops. I almost forgot. If you want to listen to this video as just audio, you can listen to the podcast. Dream Ghost, a One Piece lover. You can listen to it on any app that you listen to podcasts on, Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. Bye. Kuzaru Lasers.